In this video, we're going to parent the model to the armature that we created in the previous video. If you haven't already watched the previous video, you need to go back and watch that one because it's going to show you how to set up the armature. And then in this one, we're just going to parent the model to the armature and make it animated. So this will actually show you how to get to a final animated engine, just like the one that you just saw. A um, couple of things I want to do too is I'm going to turn all my parts back on. So my conrod's back on, my cylinder block's on, my cylinder head, and my piston. I'm going to turn off my armatures for now. And then I'm going to select my piston. And I'm going to do a control A. And this applies... Um, location, rotation, and scale. So we can say all transforms. And if I apply those, you see everything gets set. The scale is now one. Everything is good. So I'm just going to do that for all of my parts here. So I'm actually also going to turn on my spark plug and my small end. I'll select those from here. And a control A. All transforms, I'm going to select the small end, control A, all transforms, the cylinder head, control A, all transforms, cylinder block, control A, all transforms, and crankshaft, control A, all transforms, conrod, Control A, all transforms. So that's everything now is set. The scales are set. Their, their transformations are all set. Now I'm going to turn back on my armatures. And what we need to do now is to parent our parts with our armatures. So what we're going to do is we are going to select the piston. We're going to hold down shift and we're going to select the armature. And then we're going to go into pose mode. So we can select just that piece of the armature. And we're going to do a control P, <clears throat> which is parent. And then we'll just say bone. And then we're going to go back to object mode. And this time we're going to select the crankshaft, I mean the conrod. And we're going to sh hold down shift, select that bone, go back into pose mode. We are going to select that piece of the bone, control P. And once again, it's bone. And that should be good. I'll go back to object mode. And now I want to turn off my piston armature so I can see my other armature. Select outside just to unselect everything. I'm going to select my crankshaft. I'm going to select my armature. I'm going to go into pose mode. I'm going to select. this bone and control P say bone and then go back to object mode and now we're in object mode I may need to change my lighting so we can see a little bit if I'm going to be in that view so <laughs> let me just go back into this view so you can see a little better so now I'm going to select that guy, that armature, and I'm going to say RX, and I'm going to start to spin it, and now you'll see that the whole thing is moving up and down, and we can see that our pin is not... <laughs> 
our pin is not connected so we need to we need to fix that to an armature as well so let's go ahead and we'll do that i'm going to hit escape escape just puts everything back the way it was and then i'm going to say select my pin which i can do from over here and i'm going to hold down shift i'm going to select my armature going to go back into pose mode going to select the piston armature say control p bone i'm going to go back to object mode and once again turn on my crank armature Get a hold of that crank armature and just select it this way and i'm going to say r and x and just turn it and now you can see that my you can see that my pin is in the right place so i'm just i'm going to escape that a second turn off these armatures to make it easier for you to see everything rotating select my crank R and X. Select my crank. Armature. R and X. And there it goes. I kind of messed up my R and X there. I messed up where I was holding it and there it's pumping up and down and so we have everything can move the way we want it to move so that's great so i'm going to escape that and now we're going to have a look at how do we actually animate it so that we can watch an animation of this so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here and as i point down there you see my arrow comes on i click and hold and i just drag that up a little bit and now this is my timeline for this animation and what I'm going to do is, give me a second, I'm going to move this guy again. We'll take care of that. So now the, the way that we do an animation is we can move these parts and record where they move to. So to do that, we are going to go to our object properties and we will select our crank armature and its rotation we're just going to hit this little um, dot on the side here and that gives us a keyframe and if you look here that's a keyframe so that's where it's going to start then i'm going to move this up to 60 and I'm going to do one full rotation in 60. So let me do that. I'm going to say R and X, and we're going to just rotate it once. So that's going to go all the way around there, all the way back around. Minus 180. And then I'm going to hit a keyframe again. So then I'm going to move on to 120. So each one is 60 frames. And I'm going to do another rotation. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit, make it a little easier on myself. R then X. And we'll go around here. And we go all the way around to another rotation. Forty. I'm going to show you something else you can do here. So you can actually click in here and just say 540. Actually, it was minus 540. And then I can keyframe there. And then another 60. And I'm going to say R and X. Always around again. So 
that's going to be minus 900 keyframe. Can move that to 240. RNX. And so if you just want to do it manually, you can do it without actually having to rotate everything. I'm all stuck on my rotation here. keyframe there. Now if I by default I have 250 frames so if I run this animation which I can do just by pressing play you'll see it goes up, it animates, goes up, it animates, goes up, animates, nice steady and I can turn that while we're doing the animation. Nice and steady but then it'll stop here and then it starts again. So to get rid of that, I can shorten this end. So see where it says end? I can make that 240. Now the end is there. And if I run it, it should be more or less continuous. I can turn off the crank armature. And there you see my 240 frames, so it runs all the way to the end. There's no stop at the end. And if we want that to uh, animate so it's actually going up into that cylinder, we can do that too. So we can bring this down. We can select this guy and this guy. So that's the spark plug and the head and the cylinder block and then we can say G and Z and I'll just drop it down a little bit and let's start that animation so it's coming all the way out and it goes up inside and of course we can move it to wherever we want to so if I do it with this guy and say G and Z and I can drop it down just a little bit more run that then you can see the piston coming in and out of the of the cylinder Okay, so hopefully that's clear to you guys. And now if we want to give this some colors. So the way we do colors in Blender is we can just go to um, our properties for our materials. And we're going to add a new material. And we're going to call it spark plug and we will choose a base color and go with a blue color and then we can choose all kinds of surface um, inf uh, properties so like the metallic the amount of metallic you have on it the tint the roughness all of that you can change from here. And then once I've done that, if I go here, I can actually see colors if I use this view. So now I can see the spark plug is blue. Of course, I could color each part of that spark plug differently if I wanted to. I'm not going to spend time to do that. You can play with Blender and, and do that. I'm just going to set up some materials for each of these. I think what I'll do is I'll create a new one for um, the cylinder head. just cylinder head 
and I'm going to call, give that a color, maybe make it sort of less bright, maybe this color, make it very metallic. But I'm leaving some roughness in there so it's not super shiny. And then I'll create one for this. So again, I'm just selecting it. I click, I click new. And this one is cylinder block. And my cylinder block can be silverish. If I come down here, I can make it metallic. And then take all my roughness away. And now you'll see if we look closely, because it's chrome color, it is now reflecting um, the background. And we can do the same for each of these. That material, call it crankshaft. Just going to give it a color. My conrod. And finally, my piston. I could do the um, I could do the pin as well, but I'm not going to. Again, I'm going to leave some of that for you guys to do if you want to mess with it. It's fun to play with. I enjoy messing with it. I'm not very good at getting exactly what I want. I tend to mess up my lighting. And partly that's because I'm not trained as an artist. I'm trained more in engineering than art. <clears throat> so now you can see the whole thing moving with colors. And now if we want to have a background, we need to add a background so we can add a mesh plane and I'm going to G and Z just to move that guy out the way. And then I'm going to add another mesh that's a part of my background and this time I'm going to RX 90. That stands up. And then I want to GY, just move it across here, I'll move it to there, say, just look at my camera, and I'm going to show you quickly how to get the camera in close enough so that we can get ourselves uh, a decent picture. So to do that, we go from here, we say view, camera to view. And then if I zoom in, my camera is automatically moving with me. And I can pan around, get the view that I want. And I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Okay, so now if I do my animation, I'm just checking that everything is animated and in my view. That's good. I could probably zoom in just a little bit. Um, down a little bit. And then what we want to do is to check out where our light is in this view. So I'm going to come out in that camera view. You can see my camera is close up now. My light is somewhere around here. There it is up top. So I'm going to grab that. I'm just going to say G and Z and bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to go G 
GNY and move it over there so it's sort of closer to the back of the camera. And GNX, move it along this way. GNZ, I'm just bringing it down gently. GMY, if you try and move things too much too fast, you can end up messing things up from a view standpoint. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at it in a rendered view. And that'll show me where there's any shadows. So you can see my light's quite bright there. Um, I have a little bit of shadow on the bottom. If I go with that, you'll see there's going to be some shadow where we're moving. It's not too bad. I, I'm going to accept that. Again, I don't want to spend too long messing with it. That will let you take a look and, and do what you want to do. Now, of course, every now and again, we should hit Control and S to save. Then I'm going to show you how you render your view. So you just go to Render. And first, we can just render an image just to take a quick look at it. So there's an image. If you zoom out a little bit, you can see the image of it. And if I want to render the animation, what I need to do is to go here and look at where my output file is and the format of my output file. So first thing is I want to change where it goes to. So I'm going to say click that folder there. See it says output folder and I'm going to go to documents and FreeCAD and Blender output. This is where I want to put it and I want to call it engine assembly animation. And I'm going to accept that. And now I want it to be an animation. If I don't do an animation, it's going to create just a series of pictures of it. I don't want to do that. I want to create the video right away. So I'm going to use FM FFmpeg as my file format. And I'm going to use for my encoding, I'm going to use MP4. And I don't have any audio for this, so I'm just going to do it in H264 output with no audio codec. And that's good enough. And then all we do to render the animation, and this, this is the resolution of the animation. It's going to render from frame 1 to frame 240 in steps of one frame. 24 frames a second. I'm going to go render. Render animation. This is my animation. And I'm just playing it in a VLC media player. So this is the actual animation. <clears throat> the, the file. As I animated it. And you can see the animation looks pretty cool. Uh, I probably should have moved my light to make this reflect a little better, but you can look at it from any angle. You can mess with it. You can do what you want to do with it. I'd love to see some of your animations. I'd love to see how you do your uh, materials in Blender and see what you end up with. And there it is. And if you wanted to animate it, you could have it rotate while you're animating it, all of those good things. That would all be fun to see if you guys do it. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's helped you to get started with Blender and to put together an animation of this engine, which honestly is much easier in Blender, I think, than, than many other animation applications. I think we could do something similar in FreeCAD, but it takes a lot of effort to get there. The armature uh, approach that Blender has is very simple, very easy to use. So again, interested in your comments. If you want to see more Blender stuff, let me know. And as far as uh, 
our engine assembly is concerned, I think that's probably going to be the end of it. Thanks. Bye. As you can see, I've changed my colors. These are just literally just changed the colors of the background and the foreground and the pieces just for fun. I, I start playing with it. What I wanted to show you is how to animate the camera. So you can animate the camera very easily. You basically just have to um, tell the camera where you want to start, tell the camera where you want to end, and it will do the animation literally for you. So let me go to the camera. And you can see my, I'd already done the animation here. I'll show you that once. So my animation was to spin my camera around and as I bring it around here and then I zoom it back the other way. Now I'm going to, I'm going to change that. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So what we do is I'm going to, I'm going to select these, um, I'm going to select these uh, keyframes and I'm going to delete them. So now if I look, my animation is just the piston being animated. So remember the piston is animated through the, um, the armature, the way we have the armature set up. So if I go to my armature, um, you'll see that my... Animation is all because of that armature. So, so there's the keyframes for the armature. Um, I'm not going to change those. I already showed you how to set that up. So I'm going to leave that alone. I am going to turn off my armature, turn off my piston armature. And I'm going to stop that. And now, remember when we were looking through the camera view. So this is this little camera guy. I click that, I'm out of the camera view, I click that, I'm in the camera view. If I want to move around now while I'm in the camera view, I can just, um, I can pan around once I select this lock to camera view. So I lock that, now I can pan it around and my camera is actually moving to where this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up for the beginning of the frame where I want it to start how I want it to start. So I'm going to have a look there. I'm going to go back to frame zero. So this uh, little gizmo here allows you to move, play forwards, play backwards, move to the previous keyframe, move to the next keyframe, move to the beginning of this whole track, and move to the end of the track. So it's, it's that simple. Um, you can also do auto keyframing, so you can basically say every time I stop, set a keyframe. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to manually set my keyframe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I am going to go into my um, properties for my camera. So I'm going to select my camera, and here's my camera, and you can see... It, get, it tells you the focal length and where the clip starts, where the clip ends um, from, and that's the, the clipping plane. And the clipping plane allows you to see and not see uh, certain things. Well, the other thing you can do is you can go here to this little object properties, and this tells you the location and rotation of my camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up at the beginning of our shot. We have our camera locked to our view. This is where we're going to start from. And we are going to set these keyframes. We don't we don't want to leave anything um, off the keyframes. I'm going to move just to 40 and you can actually go one frame at a time with this little guy here. So I'm going to go back to 40. There it is. And then I'm just going to rotate this a little bit. And maybe zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to keyframe that.
Then I'm going to unlock my camera view. I just want to test it. I'm going to go back to the beginning. And then if we play it, we can see what it's actually going to do for us. So it's interpolating. It's, it's deciding it needs to end up here. What does it need to do to get us there? And so it's not necessarily going to be the exact same motion that I took because it's interpolating what it needs to do. So now I'm going to move to 120. Right there. I'm going to lock to my camera to view. And I'm going to just give this a little move. This way. Go lock all that. And then finally, I'm going to go to 240. You can do as many of these as you want, but I'm just doing it so you can see what to do. So I'm now just going to zip it over this way. Oh, went a little too far. And then I'm going to just zoom in. I'm going to, I'm going to actually move it down a little bit. And then tilt it over a little bit. That's where I want it to end up. Oh, what happened? I, I don't, I'm not quite sure why it moved then. Okay, I'm going to turn that off, go back one keyframe, start from there again, turn this lock camera to view, go back to my 240, and then I'm just going to tilt up a little bit, I'm going to zoom in a bit, and that is where I want to end up. I may just move it over this way a little bit. So we get it center in the shot. Then I'm going to set my keyframes. And we should be good to go. So I'm going to turn off my camera to view. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Let's take one look at this, see where we end up. So we're spinning around in front. And then we tilt. Up a little bit, and you see the speed at which is tilting up is much slower because we're going over more keyframes or more frames to get to that keyframe. And then we're going to zoom in a little bit, and we're going to tilt up a little bit. And you can see all the time that the piston is still animated; it's still moving up and down. So, and there it is, and that's my final. Um, animation. Now this one keyframe here is not sitting on the 120 so I can actually go grab and just move it. So G for grab works for the keyframes, it works for everything in Blender so the, the way that it works is it's always the same. Now I'm going to hit Control S because we want to save that and then I'm going to create a render so I just go render and render, render animation and then I'll render that fly through as well. So I'm not going to do it on video because it takes a little while to do, but I will do it and I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. So there it is. So if you've enjoyed this video, the two of them together. Please uh, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and take a look at our Patreon. Our patrons have had both these videos for some time now, uh, so I release them out onto YouTube after the patrons have seen them. And they're the ones who, who get to choose what it is uh, that we're going to make the next video on. So if you're interested in that, feel free to join the patron. You can join for as little as $1 a month. Um, if you want to be more generous, that's, I'm happy about that, but it's entirely up to you. So I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.